Hey, welcome everyone to our episode of Keto Chat. I have laryngitis. Uh, so everyone's going to have a good laugh at how I sound today. Uh, my name is Carol Freeman. I am a keto nutritionist. I'm a board certified ketogenic nutrition specialist. I specialize in helping uh, people be able to follow a ketogenic diet for lasting weight loss for a lifetime of lifestyle. And uh, I'm here today, we're launching our brand new version of our live keto chat show. Uh, we had a little bit of tech issues today, so we're going to do a recorded version today. And my whole goal I know it sounds really funny, doesn't it? Am I a robot voice? Uh, feel free to make fun of my voice. I don't know what's going on, but um, it's not oh, your. It's oh, not your. We will. We will. It's not your audio. It's me. <laughs> um, whole goal here is to bring you experts in a variety of fields, uh, to bring you happiness and joy on a variety of topics, so that. Uh, we can offset all the anxiety and anguish and everything that's going on in the world right now. And so our, tonight's topic is how to shift from fear to optimism. We've got three amazing people here. I'm so excited. Let me just give you a little bit of an overview of who we've got. Uh, we have Sarah Thorpe. Uh, she brings 30 years of personal and professional development. You know what? Actually, I'm going to do this. So normally I would introduce you guys, but my voice is so froggy. Uh, I'm going to say each of their names and I'm going to let them introduce themselves. So Sarah Thorpe, please tell us who you are. <laughs> yeah. Hi, thanks. I'm Sarah. And um, yeah, like Carol said, I've got 30 years of professional and personal development and experience that I bring to, uh, I'm an intuitive coach and healer. And I bring that to the table in working with women entrepreneurs. Excellent. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, and then up next, we have Jim Kellner. I'll let you tell your bio too. I'm a comedy stage hypnotist and a hypnotherapist and an aspiring fitness model. Damn, I'm pretty. <laughs> I, uh, I actually help people to, um, to, to do what they want to do with hypnotherapy. So whatever your goals are, hypnosis just makes it easier. And then with the comedy hypnosis, I know a lot of people uh, don't understand what that is. Basically tell a few jokes, hypnotize some audience members and make them do funny stuff. That's about it. <laughs> and also we have another Jim, Jim Weber. Hi, I'm the not pretty Jim. I'm the other Jim. Uh, I am not a professional uh, wellness person or anything like that, but but I have a personal experience in dealing with depression. I have a personal experience in dealing with stress because I've raised two women who were teenagers for a while, so I lived through that. Um, I'm a harassment trainer uh, and a stress intervener by day and a stand-up comic by night, so I got all sorts of advice for how to stay sane. Excellent, excellent. Um, thank you all for being here. And uh, uh, I'm just gonna turn this over first to uh, Sarah. Sarah, uh, share with us, uh, what is it that you have for us today to, on the message of how to shift from fear to optimism? Okay, so I know that it's a really shitty, shitty time and um, it, we're not saying that we're going to just have some la la lovely, you know, we'll just put you to bed and make you have sweet dreams. However, I do believe that it is in our own power to change our minds, to change, um, to empower ourselves to feel more optimistic, more hopeful and less stressed. And I was, I ran a, a Zoom call this morning for some people and I had come up with a template um, to ask questions. And so maybe I could just post some of these questions and then people can reflect on those and, and give, them, give them a sense of the, what they have to work with, their strengths and the resources that they have. And you know, when we're in fear, we often don't think properly because our brain isn't functioning. We don't have access to the executive functioning part of the brain. Um, but would that be okay if I ask some questions? Yeah, I think that's great. Okay. So I know that people are resourceful and brilliant and that we will all emerge from this stronger than ever. And so it, so initially, are we, are we committing to thriving 
or are we committing to being a victim in our mindset? And I know that we're, you know, I was down on the floor crying this afternoon. I felt shitty and then, but I'm committed to thriving. So if you know what you, if you know that you can just declare that, then that goes a long way as you put your stake in the ground that you are going to get through this. So the first question is, what strengths do you have that you can rely on yourself for during the pandemic? So when people think about their own strengths, it helps them access the part of themselves that's strong and capable. So if you have strengths that you can rely on yourself for, what would those be? It might be within your home, within your relationships, work. Take note of those. And then during this pandemic, what do you notice are your weaknesses that are coming to light? So sometimes, you know, we may have default patterns that are getting highlighted that you might consider that a weakness. What are the weaknesses that are being highlighted? And then how will it impact you and your life or your business if you don't address these weaknesses? So, right, you know, it's okay to have weaknesses and to be a puddle on the floor and to crumble, uh, but we can't stay there. So if we stay there, if we stay in our weaknesses, what, how will it impact our lives and our business? And then the next question is, how long are you willing to wait before addressing weaknesses? So I'm really calling people to find their own inner leader and make the choice to take the next step and then the next step. And if you can consider what resources do you have to support you at this time? What resources do you have to support you in your health, in your money, and in your relationships? And what opportunities is this COVID-19 bringing? What opportunities are you seeing arising as a result of this pandemic? Um, I'm not saying it's a good thing. I'm just saying, are there anything, is there anything that is an opportunity that you can see that you can do differently? And um, what skills would you need to build to move through this time gracefully? So that's a whole bunch of questions, but it's just designed to help you kind of calm down and find some tangible things that you can do. And if you can't do them, find some help and support to get to the next level. I think that sounds really great. And, you know, there's not a lot of, a lot of people are feeling frustrated because they don't have a lot of power right now. They feel like they don't have any control. Um, but what you're leading people through there is realizing you do have control of many things and tapping into what you do have control over and looking for the opportunities. So for example, being stuck at home for a long time, you can do a lot of things that you've put off for a long time, right? Yeah, that could be a, a you know, an opportunity. Um, one of my friends is a coach and she has young children and she was doing Facebook live yesterday. It cracked me up, but she was so mad. Um, for a lot of women and men, when they're trying to, to take care of children and run business from home and do the homeschooling that we're supposed to, that they're supposed to be doing, it's just super, super stressful. And she talked about, this is not the time for perfection porn. When you have pictures of your beautiful family or your lovely lunch on your table or your perfect garden or your the lovely yoga pose, it's like, no, that's just, it's, it, it triggers people's shame, shame, you know? And when we're like, well, I don't have my shit together like that. And then we think there's something wrong with us. So this is the time for us to be truly um, truthful and authentic. It's like, we do not have our shit together all the time. Maybe for if you have your shit together for five minutes during the day, then that might be fine. That's fine. 
maybe it'll be six minutes tomorrow but just really take take good 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 care and find your your the strengths that you have and the resources that you have well based on how much toilet paper people have been buying i'm sure they were expecting to have a lot of shit together <laughs> i know it's it's crazy and my yesterday i found myself cal trying to think maybe i should be calculating the number of toilet paper squares we have and the number of butts that it has to wipe and the how long it will take to lot to run out and then should i be you know like my mind went completely to that crazy place uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, so you basically you know you have three years worth you're going to be fine right <laughs> uh, oh sarah anything else that you want to add on this topic well, I'm a big proponent of um, creating a ritual space, meditation space. And I know that sometimes can sound, you know, like, yeah, just meditate. You know, people are like, F you, you yeah. know, if meditate. But, but I'm not saying it's going to cure everything, but I'm saying if you create a space that is quiet, that you can sit in some silence and be with yourself, the beginning of the day or the end of the day it will help to calm your body it will help and there's loads of youtube videos on meditation you can just look one up i i made a new one yesterday and i posted it on my youtube page but there's tons of them and if you just lay down at night listening to a meditation it will help you sleep better and we want people to be sleeping better so they're not super stressed by lack of sleep during the day well, we'll have to put a link to that uh, available to people. Sure. Yeah, yeah. We'll share that out. So, Thanks. thank you so much for what you shared. Uh, yeah. We'll hang out to the end, and uh, I don't know. I posted in our group if people have any questions. I don't know that we'll have any questions coming through since we're not actually live today. But um, thank you so much for what you've shared, and we'll we'll take some moment at the end to wrap this all up. Sure. Um, all right. Up next. We have the world-renowned aspiring fitness model, uh, TEDx talk uh, d talker. I don't know what you call it. <laughs> TEDx deliverer. Uh, uh, very dear friend of mine, Jim Kellner. Oh, thanks everybody. Uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, thanks for having me on, Carol. And uh, well, it was great listening, Sarah. I got to tell you, folks. Uh, I'm just gonna share. I do not have my shit together. This. The dish, the sink is full of dishes. I've been, I've been going crazy because I'm pivoting. We're pivoting right now. We're not panicking. We're pivoting, and so I've, uh, I've pivoted to the online sphere, uh, which is something I've been doing for a while anyway. So fantastic. Um, so I, you know, I wanted to share three really powerful things that I think can can help you all make a. Um, kind of come out of this uh, in, a, in kind of a different way. Um, you know, it's, it's funny because a lot of times I will have people tell me, and Carol, you, you've done hypnosis before, you probably heard this before as well. You know, uh, I don't want to go to a hypnotist because I don't want somebody controlling my thoughts. Here's a crazy thing, people. You're not in control of your thoughts. <laughs> and because the reason I know that is because you tell me you don't want to go, but you still or you don't want to eat chocolate cake anymore, but you're still eating chocolate cake. You don't want to be afraid of the coronavirus, but you're still worried about the coronavirus. So you're not in control of your thoughts, but I'd like you to invite you to start directing your thoughts a little more. One of the problems um, with, um, with trying to direct our thoughts, because we get into habits, we go down these roads where we want to, it doesn't feel good, but it feels comfortable you know, like I was watching the news a lot for the last few days. All of a sudden I was like, why am I watching the news? You know, I'll get the updates. But, but if you're watching the news all the time, you're just, you're going down that road all the time, constantly going down that road. Um, it's the same thing. And I'm, I don't know about you, Carol, because I, you know, um, I have friends that have uh, diabetes and they're constantly posting pictures of things like cake on their Facebook page. People, you're directing your thoughts. You're in control of that. And so, um, what I, what I would say is avoid all that, all that garbage. So start, start, you know, just start avoiding it. And you got to think about other things. And so what I, I invite you to do after this right now, 
think about three other things you'd like to think about. Think about that vacation you're going to take when you, um, when you, when you are finally able to do vacations or, or whatever and start really focusing on directing them and just refuse to allow yourself to continue going down that, that direction. And I know, look, I was sulking the other day. I was my 90% of my income for the next month evaporated just like this, just canceled all these events. And, uh, and then I started thinking, it's kind of a cool thing right now because all in this together, everybody. I was thinking about, you know, like if you think about uh, World War II, you think about World War I, you think about the Great Depression, you hear stories about how everybody came together and helped each other. And I mean, we just have this unprecedented opportunity. And let's face it, we've got Netflix. So, I mean, we're super lucky. And, uh, and so I, I think you know, it's focusing on the gratitude. Now, the other thing that, um, that I wanted to share with you, and this is something I came up with with a client one time. She was telling me about some stuff that was going on at an office. And she was frustrated. She was stressed all the time. And I started, I started, it was hard for me not to laugh because it sounded so ridiculous. It was absurd. And it, it got me on this idea. I said, what if you, what if you started thinking about this, this stuff that's going on at work, like you're on an episode of Seinfeld. And, and really, if you start thinking about instead of, because here's the thing, uh, really good imagination, because they can, they can make any situation scary, terrible, horrible, they can blow it up in bright colors, uh, give you all kinds of details. But what you can do is you can use that the opposite. So, Try to think of yourself like if you were in a Simon Pegg movie, one of those apocalyptic movies that him and his buddy have done. Uh, or think about if you were in, you know what I mean? Because people, seriously, people are fighting over toilet paper. That is, that is hilarious. It's sad and troubling, but it's freaking hilarious. We should be laughing about this. This is unbelievable. And people are dying, of course, and that's no fun. But, you know, more bacon for the rest of us. I'm sorry. Um, that, was, that wasn't nice. But... Uh, <laughs> um, uh, there really is there really is just a, a great opportunity now. Um, I've watched six movies in the last five days. I never get to watch movies. So, <laughs> um, and, uh, and yeah, you know, like like what um, Sarah was saying, kind of reframing the situation, you know, trying to just, and again, we're not saying this is a good situation. I'm not, I, believe me, I'm not excited about it. But if you can just find one or two things in every situation, really, you'll find something good. And And the way you can find that good is you go, wow, this is really terrible, but the good thing is, and follow that up with something. The good thing is I got to watch six movies. Only two of them were good, but I got to watch six movies. So uh, anyway, that's, that's what I have for you today, today, everybody. Thanks for having me on, Carol. I appreciate it. Uh, it's always good to talk to you. Uh, thank you for uh, the tips that you have. Uh, the good thing about having laryngitis is that I get to let you guys talk more. Normally, I talk a lot, so this is an opportunity uh, for me to be quiet and listen and to let you all talk more. So, thank you so and much. It's for being weird here. to just kind of pontificate without any dialogue, but oh well. <laughs> I know I normally would have lots of questions too. So, um, yeah, along those lines, for me, um, I you know had a pity party as well at the beginning because I. Um, <clears throat> I'm an extrovert. Uh, I need to be out among people. Um, I also have a high need for, for touch. Um, before this uh, self-quarantine, being staying at home, I would spend six or eight hours out every night doing stand-up comedy, and I got to hug everybody that I was with and talk to them. Um, that fills personal needs that I have for my mental health. And so I had a pity party the first few days of poor me, Poor me, how am I gonna get my needs met? Um, and, uh, you know, realizing flattening the curve and for the best good for all, um, I embraced it. Uh, I'm at home with my two cats. I don't have anybody that I live with and cat touch is not the same as human touch, uh, but I took this opportunity. I'm gonna be able to follow up with a lot of things in my own company that I've wanted to do, that I've been putting on the back burner for a long time, and um, uh, also get the opportunity then to serve, uh, put out these 
videos every day. So these episodes of being, being able to bring. So never before have we had so much talent at our fingertips because everyone's at home and nobody has any bookings or obligations. They can't leave. And so I have a wealth of talent available to be able to bring to all of you that are watching this now and to be able to share that of service to everyone out there and try to bring hope and positivity and uh, uh, happiness to everyone that's out there is the the good that I'm seeing in all this. Um, and my voice is trying to keep me from doing that, but uh, <laughs> I'm not going to stop yet. So uh, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and now, now we're going to go to the other gym, the, uh, the not fitness model or the not aspiring fitness. Oh, OJ. Model. Yeah. Uh, and so thank OJ, you the other gym. somebody that I've met through comedy, <laughs> a very dear friend of mine. And, um, with my comedy community, I wanted to be able to bring on most of these episodes as well. Somebody from that community to be able to bring some humor and lightness and uh, happiness to all of us as well. So, hey, Jim, welcome. Hi, Hi. Will. Um, as a 62-year-old member of your community, thank you for flattening the curve and all that kind of, I appreciate that. Um, man, you know, everything, everything that uh, hypnotist Jim, pretty, pretty Jim said, um, damn, he's pretty. Uh, and uh, Sophie, those were all things that I embrace myself for dealing just in real life with depression and stress and things like that. And sometimes I simplify it as just remembering to breathe when I start feeling, you know, overwhelmed. Sometimes I will, I mean, this is literally what I will do. I will stop and say, all right, take a deep breath, let it out, do it again. You're going to be okay. I've done that before. I walk on to do a set sometimes. I'm feeling nervous or things are bad, but for I mean, purposes of the day, when, when I looked at your, the, the promo for the show and I said, talking about being optimistic in a stressful time, I thought, Carol, you know, picked the wrong second gym here because <laughs> optimistic. That, I mean, maybe I can be optimistic for 15 minutes a time, five times a day, maybe, and then it dawned on me, that's the lesson. That's pretty good because we can't, there's no way these days we're going to be able to be optimistic all the time. I mean, sometimes it's going to get hard and it depends on what happens to us. I mean, I, I found out late last night that my oldest daughter tested negative, not having it. Um, she's gotten tested because she had symptoms and she's highly, highly risked because of past physical problems. And man, what an emotional roller coaster. But then thinking, well, this is just the first time and we're going to have a lot of roller coasters, you know? Um, so I have a tiny tip. All the things that Sophie talked about in Jim, but this is my tiny tip that I What's started it? doing. Sarah, Psst, it's Sarah. Sarah. Am I saying Sophie? Yeah. Sa you know, it starts with an S. Uh -huh. It starts with an S, and I'm named dysfunctional, and I embrace it. Sarah, <laughs> why am I saying Sophie? You know, probably some Netflix thing I watch. I don't know, but it was a compliment. It's in my mind. It's a good thing. Sarah, 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 Sarah. Okay, now I'm going to jump out the window of my apartment, but it's not because of the, not because of the pandemic. It's because I'm embarrassed. Um, back to my tiny, tiny tip. Um, based on what Sarah said, and and damn, he's pretty, Jim. Um, I started doing this as a creativity trigger exactly 300 days ago because today was my 300 day in the streak, um, and it came out of a book called The Artist Way. And Carol, I've talked to you about this before. Um, but it's called The Morning Papers. And I thought, this sounds like such a stupid idea. Um, and the author said, no, first thing you do in the morning, literally first thing is you sit down and you just stream of conscious write three pages. And so I started doing it religiously. And at first it was kind of a chore. And a lot of my stream of consciousness said, I cannot think of anything to write right now. Pause, pause, pause. I want to go to the bathroom. I mean, nothing meaningful. But mm -hmm. things would start slipping out. And as I got used to doing it, one thing I found is I like getting out of bed because I look forward to doing it and I can't have my coffee until after I've done it. Um, so there's that. Um, but I found that sometimes I'll be writing stuff and then out of the blue, something I wasn't thinking about, there'll be a thought I didn't remember I thought before and it will open things up to me, not just about being creative, creative, but about things in my life, things dealing with an ex or love or just whatever it is. And so it's working now too during the stress of now I found while I'm writing it and I realized this morning as I was writing, I said, that's my tip for this thing. Even if you, it's, if you hate journaling, don't call it journaling. You're not journaling. It's not a diary. You're just talking to yourself. And sometimes when we get stressed out, we'll think we're talking to ourselves in the right way. We'll think we know what the problem is, but there's something about it that it's there somewhere, 
but it's not where we can access it. And I think the morning papers have helped helped me do that. And it sometimes helps me come up with some good jokes too, but, but it's self-therapy. And as a way of somebody who's dealt with depression in the past and whatnot, I'm alert to the signals of that. And, you know, being able to be honest with yourself is really important. And that is one thing that you can do. So speaking of therapy, uh, crafts are important. I did this cross stitch a while back. So it says, welcome to group therapy. So, you know, I don't, I don't endorse heavy drinking at this time, but, you know, do what makes you happy, whatever sparks joy. So that's what I say. Oh, thank you so much. I love that. I didn't see a red light. Was I okay? <laughs> That's the comedy thing. I, did, I wasn't timing anyone today, so uh, we have more freedom, freedom uh, of the mic since we don't have any hecklers here to ask questions of us. So, uh, ah. yeah. Um, yeah, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, all right. Well, um, ideally when this was gonna be live, we were gonna have people asking us live questions. I did post to see if anybody, let's see. If there's any comments that have come in. Um, Sarah, 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 Sarah. Uh, let's see. <laughs> so embarrassed. Well, I debated whether I should just let, let you keep calling her Sophie. And then, <laughs> or um, it's kind of like, do you uh. tell someone there's a booger in their nose or not? And they probably would feel more embarrassed to know that it was there the whole time. Yeah, so. oh yeah. <laughs> I could tell you were flinching and I didn't know why. Well, I was like, wait, is he talking about somebody else? Is this isn't the book that he's talking about? Um, all right, why can't I find the event? Let's see this one. All right, did anybody comment? Discussion, there we go. Let me find my own comment. All right, I don't see any. I don't see any there. So, um, all right, well, let's wrap this up. Um, when I do my, I love that. I just want to say that like Jim's dog reminds me of mm -hmm. the hairdo reminds me of the other Jim. I don't know. That's terrible, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, your hair is way better, Jim. Never I think of being triggered. <laughs> <laughs> Find the positive. So awesome. um, all right. Um, well, let's let's wrap this up. When I do coaching with my own clients. Um, we do group meetings and I call it the lightning bolt round. Um, so uh, lightning bolt is share your aha, your takeaway, or something that you just want to say is the last thing you want to say to the group here or to everyone who's watching. Who's first? It's popcorn style. So whoever wants to go. Although in, in my keto coaching, we don't call it popcorn style because you know, that could be <laughs> trigger food. So we call it lightning bolt. So it's whoever would like to go first. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm going to just go then. My aha is listening to Sarah. And the gym is even professionals have meltdowns. And so the fact that I cried at Safeway and bought three boxes of Oreos is okay. So my takeaway <laughs> is it's okay not to be okay sometimes. Yeah, I think you just gave me my takeaway. That's that's the lasting message that I want to take for myself and to and for anyone else is that it's okay to not be okay. It's truly okay not to be okay. And we we shouldn't be pretending that we're okay when we're not okay these days. That's okay. Yeah, I will I will uh, I will steal that one too. I uh I like to tell myself, uh, you don't have to be perfect yet. So I can still strive, but I don't have to be, I'm not there yet. You can, you can be pretty and not perfect. It's true. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, and I, I, what stands out to me then is uh, Jim's realization that you can have moments of positivity and shifting into uh, optimism, it doesn't have to mean that you have to spend your entire day trying to be optimistic and positive the whole time. Yeah. You have to relax, yeah. Breathe, meditate. Yeah. Oh, you guys, have a cookie. You guys are all amazing. Thanks for sticking with it for the tech issues. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for sharing. All oh, thank you, Carol, for doing it. You're welcome. Oh, thank you. You're amazing, thanks, too. Carol. Thank you.
You're welcome. Thanks everyone for watching. Please send in your, your comments and questions and we'll figure out the tech side soon so we can do this live. So yeah. All right. Thank you everyone. Thanks guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.